everyone, Todd from Sideshow FX once again. And in this video, I'm going to go through the installation process of our Pro Pack for DaVinci Resolve on the Stream Deck device. Now I'm featuring this on the Stream Deck XL device. If you have the 15 key version, it's the same installation procedure, but of course just on the smaller device. So you can still follow along with this one. So when you download the pack and you unzip it, this is what you're going to see. And recently we have included a German version of our profile, so they're made for the German keyboard layout as opposed to the English keyboard layout, which we've always provided since the beginning. So if you're working with a German keyboard layout, you would open up this folder and you would choose one of the profiles that are listed here, either Mac or Windows, and you would choose this keyboard shortcut the German ones for the Mac or Windows system to install those. Now I'll show you how to install the keyboard shortcuts in a second. If you're working on an English keyboard layout, of course you go to the English folder and you have the English keyboard shortcuts and you have a few more options of profiles to choose from that you can load up. And so I'm going to load up our Pro labeled for the Mac. I'm on the Mac at the moment. So depending on which one of these profiles you want and which uh, operating system you're working with, you would choose the one you want to work with and just double click it and make sure that you have your Stream Deck software open uh, and you would double click that and then it gets loaded in. Now one other thing we're going to do, let's close this up for a second and we've got a plug-in here because we've added a few additional things. We wrote our own plug-in to take advantage of a few extra features. So when you open up this plug-in folder with your Stream Deck software open, you would double click this. Now I already have it installed, so I won't double click it again, but that's all you need to do is just double click it and it will ask you to install, you click install and it will load in. Now when we go to DaVinci, you will go to DaVinci Resolve and the keyboard customization and you go to the ellipses here and you say import preset, you'll navigate to your downloaded folder and you go into, if you're working on English or German, go into the keyboard shortcut folder and for your operating system and you would double click this one or just click it and say open. I already have it installed so I'm not going to repeat the process and it will appear here. You would click save and then your keyboard shortcuts will be aligned with what we've programmed in the profile itself. So once you have it fully installed this is what the main page will look like. So the first part of this is divided into the same way you would find the menu functions along the top of DaVinci with file, edit, trim, timeline, that sort of thing. So going into each one of these, we have tools that are associated with each one of those menu items. And these are shortcut commands that at the press of a button will invoke any one of the actions it's demonstrating. Now, when you come here to media management, this section along here is more focused on task as opposed to the context menu items. There is some duplicate from the menu items, but this is pro these are probably the areas you'd spend most of your time because they contain most of the commands that you would use. So if we go into media management, for example, these have all the tools associated with, if you're over in the media page of DaVinci, anything having to do with ingesting and managing your media. You can also go into uh, flagging all of your clips, selecting the flags, and then going into uh, clip color, assigning colors to any one of the clips. Back out, and then we can get into the editing mode here. Now these are all the editing tools that you're gonna need when you're working with editing in your, in your sessions. And we have three pages of editing functions. They're available here. And in addition, you see along the bottom, of each of these pages, there are additional pages that we can enter into that are specific tasks, such as having the trim tools all in one place. And we have all of our overlays. And this is a new feature we've just recently introduced. And this allows us to control the transform functions in our inspector. Now I'll demonstrate how this works. Now we have to do a little bit of setup first in order for us to make use of this page because these keys use our new plugin which allow us to program coordinates. I'll demonstrate what I mean by that. You can see up along the top here we have our zoom link button which is right here. 
So what we want to do is when we press that button, we want to be able to turn that zoom link on and off. So we have to tell our profile where that is on our workstation. So we'll take our mouse cursor over that icon and we'll press and hold for about a second until you see the green check mark. That indicates that it has recorded that position. Now if I'm working somewhere else in the interface and I want to unlink the X and Y properties of Zoom, I can now just click that button and my cursor will jump to that location, click that link, and then jump back to where I was, allowing me to continue to work. So that's how these keys work. So what we need to do is just very quickly program our XY coordinates for each one of these controls. So for our Zoom X, we're going to mouse over the integer, press and hold the Zoom X key until it tells us that it recorded, go over Y, press and hold. Now you see the next key over indicates that it's previous keyframe. Well, we can't see those icons because we don't have a keyframe set just now. So I'll set it in a second, but I'm gonna set the keyframe button for this parameter, mouse over that, and I've now recorded that. Now I can record a keyframe just by pressing the button. Now I'm gonna move my playhead back a little bit. I'm gonna record another keyframe. Now I'm gonna move the playhead back in between those two keyframes and that allows me to see the previous and next keyframe markers. Now I can move my mouse over top of that previous keyframe marker. And there I've recorded that position. I'll do the same for the next keyframe marker. And I've recorded that position. Now with that, that allows me to then move back and forth between the two keyframes that I made. And of course the last button is indicating a reset for the zoom, so I'll mouse over reset, press and hold. Now to show you how it all works, if I want to affect the X and Y, I can press X and go down here and I can move my controller. Go to Y, I can now stretch it Y if I want to link the two together. I can do a full zoom. And if I want, I can reset those parameters. All right, we can quickly go and do the rest on this page. And we also have our horizontal and vertical flips that we can program. So now at the press of a button, we can always just do a flip. Now the rest of the parameters are on the next page. So we'll record the anchor point on X. This is pitch, and this is yaw. Now if you find that the movement is too fast or too slow for your liking, it is adjustable. Let's go to your Stream Deck software, click on either the left or right controller, and you see we have a speed slider here. So I can increase the speed, and you want to try and make, make it about the same on both sides. Now when I adjust my position, it's a little quicker. It's all up to personal taste, you can adjust that how you like. Now you notice we also have another folder here called Custom. These allow you to create your own custom keys for any parameter in DaVinci that you choose. So let's say for example that we Let's say we want to have a custom key for horizontal and vertical on here. Let's turn off the same horizontal and vertical here. And I'll mouse over the value, press and hold. And we'll do the one underneath. Might be easier to remember. Press and hold. Now anytime that I want to adjust that value as long as this effect is present on the screen, I can adjust that value by jumping to it and then changing the value. Now what it won't do is it won't open up the window for you. So if we're over in the video section and I press the key for the Gaussian blur, 
it's not going to open that window. You have to have the window open where you programmed it, and then you can jump there and start making your adjustments. Now this is handy when you have effects that have many controls and you want to be able to jump around very quickly. And let's say we have the pencil sketch here. So we've got a lot of different controls here. It would be handier if I could just quickly program this. If this was an effect that I went to all the time, I can record coordinates for all these controls or just the controls that I wanted and then quickly just hit a key and jump to it. Now you'll notice there's two different kind of custom keys here. There's a slider indicator key and there's a button indicator key. So if we go back here to the Gaussian blur, we can see we've got a checkbox for the same horizontal vertical. We can mouse over that checkbox, press and record the position of that, and then we can just use that to lock the two coordinates together so that when we choose one of these, they will work in unison. So any parameter that you can find in DaVinci can be adjusted with these controls. And you can always go into your Stream Deck software, click on the key that you've programmed, and you can add in your own custom title so you can easily identify what the action was that you have programmed for. Now do keep in mind that these are recording your XY coordinates, so the positioning is important your position should always remain the same at the point at which you recorded it. For example, if I then scroll down here and I want to adjust my transform, it is not going to move the window up. It is simply going to put the cursor in the position where you initially recorded it. So you have to make sure that you are in the position where you had the, done the original recording and then you'll be able to adjust the value. Now if we go into editing page two, we can lock and, and uh, disable our tracks. We can adjust our track destinations. We have some navigation tools. Apply our clip colors, markers, flags, and multicam. All these features are here, and into page three, we have our third page of controls for editing. Now, one more over, we have grading. So this is, it contains all of the commands that you need when you're working in the grading workspace. All your node shortcuts are here. We've got two pages of node shortcuts and overlays, that sort of thing. We have a dedicated node folder for even more node control. Wipe and overlay. Now we have an, a new addition here in a wipe overlay that also utilizes our new plugin. So let's say I want to use a reference wipe. I can go to reference wipe here and let's say we're going to use a horizontal wipe. We can use our stream deck to move that wipe back and forth very easily. We just have to do one quick little programming and that is just take your mouse, put it in the center of your screen and we're going to press and hold our target and that's done. Now anytime that we have a wipe, we have our horizontal wipe at the moment so we can move back and forth and adjust our wipe. If we have a vertical wipe, we use the up and down. Just a little bit of a handy little extra feature for you. We also have a split screen folder. We have a folder dedicated to tracker and keyframes our memories, and we have fixed node trees. Now if you're not familiar with our fixed node trees, these are pre-built node trees that you would typically choose before starting the grade on a shot to get your structure set up and labeled for you. And we have nine different ones here you can choose from, ranging from four nodes to a more, much more complicated 18 node structure. So just to show you how it works, you just press on the node structure you want to work with and it quickly will label and build those nodes for you, ready for you to start your grade in each one of them. On the second page, we have our printer lights. These quickly allow us to adjust our different printer lights. This is the full printer light I'm in at the moment. And we have half printer lights, which is a finer adjustment. 
and the quarter printer lights, which is the smallest increment of adjustments that we can make with the printer lights. Now, if you want to control all of the color parameters in the color room, we have a pack that's available for that. That is our color panel for DaVinci Resolve. And it uses our plugin architecture, or in the case of our Windows system, it uses our Windows script to access all the individual controls, giving you complete freedom of creativity. Now we can move into the sound folder, and this is one full page of sound controls for us to use in the Fairlight room. And our last page is Fusion. And this gives us all of our fusion controls. The first page shows us our most commonly used nodes. So if we want to just get a blur node, it'll apply that for us. And then we have it divided into tools, and these are all different menus of all the different tools that you could use and all of the different effects that are available. And of course, just clicking on any one of these will apply that effect. Now as a fun little addition, we also included a couple of little screensavers. This is a uh, RGB Parade screensaver. When pressed that, it just mimics a RGB Parade. And this is just a screensaver. It has no functional abilities. It is not representing any of the colors outputting from your DaVinci device. And the same with our vector scope. And RGB. So that's it. That's our Pro Pack for DaVinci Resolve on the Stream Deck device. I hope you guys get a lot of use out of it and it helps speed up your editing sessions. Until next time, we'll talk to you soon.